Hey, what's up guys, it's Blake, and today I'm gonna to be going through all the equipment I use and kind of explaining how I record my covers and the entire process that I go through to make all the magic happen. In this, we're gonna be going through all the guitars I use, all the pedals I use, all the programs I use, and everything that goes on essentially behind the scenes and the creating, kind of what I do on YouTube. It's a very highly requested video, so I'm happy to finally get to it. So in this video, we're gonna have a, like a multi-camera setup of one on me, one on the pedal board, so, so you can see everything that's going on, and a screen capture of Logic, so you can see exactly what settings I use for basically everything. It's gonna be very in-depth and very long, so get ready. And stressful, because I have no idea what I'm doing, like every other video I make. So let's get into it. So first we're gonna go through all the guitars I use and all of that good stuff, which is kind of the main part of the guitar covers. You know? Okay, so the first one is kind of my baby. It's a 2013 Gibson Les Paul Traditional Pro 2 in a Sunburst, and it's basically my favorite guitar. Very versatile, it has double coil taps for both the pickups and a 10 decibel boost down here. But for pickups, uh, in the bridge slot I have a bare knuckle black dog, and in the next slot I have a classic 57 plus, which is just like a hotter version of the 57. It's uh, kind of my go-to guitar and the one I try to use most often when I'm playing anything like pop punk oriented or anything that doesn't require a ton of clean. So I love it. It's my favorite as I keep saying. It's my baby. So moving on to the next one is my newest addition to the group. And it is a 2012 American Standard Telecaster. And Originally it was in another sunburst finish, but I had it refinished and relic to this nice shell pink and I've wanted a shell pink guitar forever, so this is my favorite in terms of the way it looks and people love it in the comment section every time I use it, just based on the fucking finish of it. But uh, for pickups it's just stock American tele pickups, nothing special going on, but I eventually do want to put in a set of bare knuckle pile drivers at some point. But yeah, pretty basic on this one. It's the only thing that really makes it stand out against everything is the custom finish. So. And next is the first guitar I ever bought. And that is the one that's been on the channel for the longest. And it is a 2010 American Standard Strat. And this has been with me since the beginning. This is essentially what I kind of cut my teeth on playing guitar. I kind of always, I never really owned a solid one before this one, so I really consider this my first real guitar. So it holds a special place in my heart. But this one, all stock, except for the uh, Super Duggan Hot Rails in the bridge. Uh, I installed that a few years ago when I only had this at my disposal to kind of make it a little more versatile, make it a little heavier when it came to playing pop punk because the uh, single coils weren't getting the job done. I love the Seymour Duncan Hot Rail. Uh, it's possibly my favorite mini humbucker I've ever played, but again, all stock. Love it. It's another favorite. Definitely my go-to when playing anything clean oriented. It just has that great style of sound. And okay. and that's it for guitars, and currently this is my only bass, and it is a 2008 Fender Jaguar made in Japan. Uh, they don't make them in Japan anymore, and this one has the jazz bass configuration of pickups, and in here right now are Seymour Dunn quarter pounders, and they are definitely an improvement over the stock pickups that came in these. But these switches are all confusing as hell. So this is an active passive switch. This one's a bass slider, treble, treble slider. And then down here are your pickup selectors. So that's neck off, neck on, bridge off, bridge on. And then there's a bass boost circuit. So there's a lot going on on here. And it was definitely confusing to figure out when I first got it. But this has been through kind of hell 
with me. I've smacked it off a ton of shit. All the back is kind of all checkered. There's a chunk out of the headstock when I swung it and hit an amp. And all of the, kind of the rim is all scratched up. And there's holes in this down at the bridge because at one point I had uh, kind of the ashtray retro cover over here and just a pickup cover on here, but I decided there was kind of too much chrome going on. So now that's off and yeah, that's it about this one. Oh, and this is a different pick card. They didn't make them in all black. Uh, they originally came in black and white and I just swapped that on. So I'm pretty sure I've never seen a, another Jaguar base all black. So it's unique. So moving on now to pedalboard. Okay, so my pedalboard is kind of my pride and joy a little bit. It's my favorite part of playing guitar and I like it. It's great. But anyway, so uh, signal chain immediately goes into a Dunlop volume pedal, which essentially just controls the volume and everything going on. But linked out of that into out of that is a polytune tuner, which is a, just your basic stroke tuner, nothing really special going on with that. And then out of that, we go straight into a compressor, which is an Exotic Effects SP, possibly my favorite compressor that I've ever played. And on this one, it's pretty simple. Two knobs, you got volume and you got blend, and a low, high, and mid toggle switch. So pretty basic to use, but definitely it improves the sound a ton, evens out the notes, makes everything the same volume, extends your sustain. It's great. So moving on from that, we go to a straight, kind of basic Dunlop Crybaby Wah GCB 95, I think. And yeah, pretty basic Wah. And then out of that, we go into all my overdrive pedals. And here we have a TS-808, two Screamer. I originally had a TS-9, and I definitely like this version a lot more just because of the way it pushes the mids a little bit differently. And then out of the Tube Screamer we go into a Klong clone from Pedal Monsters, which it was a custom build for me. Uh, if you know Star Wars, that's Kylo Ren, so I like to call it the Kylon. Because it's, I don't know. <laughs> but this is a very hot, hot pedal. It comes through my interface, very loud, very thick, and it's kind of tough to handle in some spots, but uh, it's fairly transparent, just as kind of all clone clones are, and that's currently what I'm using the most for my overdrive. And then, then I go into uh, my fuzz pedal, which is just an earthquake device's hook. Uh, it's based on your classic big, big muff, so it's a germanium circuit. But my favorite part of this pedal is the shift knob, which essentially is just a fine tuning of the tone. So it's it's also very hot as well. But love fuzz. Fuzz is probably my favorite effect. I just don't get to use it a And all of those go into the Boost of Grande pedal, which is probably the cheapest pedal on my board but I kind of love it the most. It really thickens up the sound and it's up to 10 decibels of clean boost, so it's great. I was originally using the uh, Keeley Katana, which is up there, and I just wasn't liking the way it kind of flattened out and compressed my tone even more on top of the SP, so not my favorite. So that pedal's 120. You can get a boost of Grande for like 25 on reverb, and it's, I still prefer that sound to the, the to the Keeley. So that's kind of it for my overdrive and boost. And so now I go into my modulation, which I'm starting with a uh, Julia chorus from Walrus Audio, which is like my favorite chorus of all time, and that's mostly because of the blend knob, because you can go from a completely dry signal all the way into vibrato with two different waveforms and it goes so much farther than a regular chorus just from great in depth because of the lag control which is really the movement and how much you're going to hear that sound move and so 
Then we go into the La Calavera from Alexander Pedals, which is a phaser. And on this one, we have three different settings, Suave, Dynamica, and Loco, which is, which produces some pretty intense phaser tones. So Suave is just your basic phaser. And then Dynamica, uh, it responds to the way you play, and that just creates a whole like bubbly, wavy, and really chewy tone. And then Loco is like completely fucked up. It just does whatever it wants, and it just, it's a wild tone. It's intense. And so next we move into my two favorite things in the world, which is the Strymons. So the timeline is up next in the, the uh, single chain. And it's really everything you could ever want in a delay pedal ever. I could probably spend two hours talking about it, but we're not going to. So essentially, you have a hundred presets of 12 different delay algorithms. And so you have tape delay, analog delay, digital delay, uh, dual delay, pattern, reverse ice, which is their own custom algorithm, which causes like a harmony to float above the delay, uh, duck, which only which acts as like a studio type of delay where only the last thing you play delays and not everything else. So it really cleans everything up. A swell setting, uh, a trend setting, a filter one, and a lo-fi, which are very specific to each different preset. So you can really get a lot out of the timeline. And right now I'm using the Ernie Ball v MVP uh, as an expression to control uh, the time setting so you can really get those like oscillating effects without having to go down there and play with the knobs. And so that goes into um, the Big Sky, which is a reverb pedal which has equally as many options as this timeline. And there's just so much in there. Again, 200 presets, 12 different algorithms of like reverb that I could not even like imagine. So on this one, there's a room setting, a hall setting, a plate, spring, swell, bloom, where the reverb starts really low and then blossoms, a cloud setting where it starts really low, I mean, it starts really high and then gets lower, a corral where it kind of emulates human voice, a uh, shimmer setting, which is kind of becoming popular now, magneto setting, which is very similar to a trem, uh, Non-linear reflections, which are two kind of filter settings of that. And then the last pedal I have on my board currently is the ISP Decimator 2, which is a noise reduction to kind of clean everything up. So that's kind of it for the pedal board. So now we're moving on to programs on lovely Logic Pro. So in Logic, I run kind of a few different presets of everything. So on the top, we have a bass setting. And on that, we have just your standard noise gate. Nothing really, it's not too tight. It allows that sustain to ring out. That's pretty standard. Sometimes I run a compressor, which is just very similar, vintage style compression. And then I run a little EQ, which is kind of boosted in the lower frequencies and kind of sucked out in the mid to highs. And I just have a tuner and then bias amp, which is loading. It takes a little bit. So I actually don't use any of the base amp models that are in Logic. I actually use a clean high watt setting, oddly enough, and keep the gain fairly low and push the bass in the middle nothing too special going on there, just basic EQ and then into preamp, 12 AT7 preamp tubes. Clean setting basically. And then into some more EQ on a bass boost preset, which kind of, as the name would portray, it boosts the bass. And then for my tone stack, more clean power amp, 6L, 6 GB, so it's not too crunchy. It's just kind of your basic 
middle of the road style of bass amp. Not trying to push it too hard. But for a cab, I use a green back sim, so it's not too in your face, kind of leveled out. Nothing really special going on for that one. So to move into my lead, I, this is more for my overdriven sections. So my bias preset for this is a Mesa Dual Rec. I keep the gain, again, fairly low. I let most of my pedal board do the work. I'll show you that when we actually get into like some of the sounds and how everything works and all that. But for my preamp, I use 12 AX7s and I kind of push everything. I push the lows, mids, and highs, so I kind of have a very high gain setting on this one, on the preamp. And for the tone stack, American Tread Play, just to keep it consistent with that Mesa. And then, for my EQ after my tone stack, I slightly push the bass frequencies and suck out all the treble. And my power tube section, it's EL34s, so I'm really looking for the power and kind of the crunch that Mesa is known for, and that's all on modern and push settings as well. And for my transformer, American style would go along with the Mesa, and cab again a Mesa tread plate sim. And I double track both of those pan left and right. And also I have a thin and thick section, which just has different levels of gain on each of the two sims. And so then we go into my clean uh, section, which is very simple. And yeah. This is where I start getting complicated and start mixing amps a little bit. On my left side, I run a high watt sim with with a very high push to middle and kind of a little probably bass and treble at like six o'clock. Nothing too crazy going on there. And in this tone stack, I use 1287s for my preamp tubes. Again, with an ultra clean setting to kind of bring out all of the uh, shininess in what I'm trying to do with cleans, tone stack, clean again, power amp, 6V, 6GTs, again, to kind of bring out the twanginess and really bring out the brightness that I look for in my clean sections. And this is the only place I really differ away from it in my uh, transformer type, just because I use a fat style to kind of beef it up in this section. But other than that, I try to keep it as clean as possible. And again, in this amp, when I use a uh, green back sim. And so that's my left pan. And so for my right one, I do things a little bit differently on this one. Still takes a while to load. I use a Roland Jazz Chorus 120 sim, which is like my favorite solid state clean tone ever. And this one, I back off the treble a bit, boost the amp a ton, and kind of keep the game low. And for this one, I have a very glassy setting in my preamp with no EQ at all. 1287s, my tubes, tone stack. I actually go way out of what is expected and I use a 5150 uh, tone stack, which is weird, but it works for some reason. I have no idea why it works. It shouldn't work, but it does. And again, I use EL84s and that just really brings out the brightness in the power amp section. Transformer, British style. And for the cab, we have V30s. So it's a really all over the place kind of preset, but I really like the way it works. And that is it for the amps and problem and the ad. And that is it for the amps and presets I use in Logic. Okay, now I'm just going to go through some random miscellaneous stuff that I use. For strings on all my guitars, I use Elixir Polyweb 11s. And I also use Elixir bass strings as well. I just don't remember the gauge. I kind of change that up frequently. But I love the coated feel of Elixir strings just because I have really like corrosive sweat. And I run through like Didarios and Ernie Balls so fast. So like I really buy the elixirs for the coating so they last me a lot longer 
like even up to five times longer. So it's definitely worth the extra money I paid for them. And for picks, I use Dragonheart picks. They're kind of a boutique brand, but they are, again, very worth it. Every single pick is made out of a different type of high quality plastic. And I prefer the Pures. But the thing that's cool about Dragon Hearts is that there are three different uh, picking sizes you can use. You can have a regular, it's like right up a triangle one, a sharper edge for speed runs, and then a rounded edge for strutting. So it's a really cool and versatile pick. They run about, I think, $9 a pick, so they're expensive, but they are worth it. They're also very thick, also like about three millimeters. For capos, I just use regular Kaiser capos. But for my interface, I use the Apogee one. It has a breakout cable that breaks off into a quarter, I'm oh, sorry, an XLR mic uh, female slot and a quarter inch input. And this is really simple, just one knob. But it also has a built-in condenser mic and it is made specifically to work with Logic. So it, it's great, it works. It has never let me down. But for editing software, I use Final Cut Pro as well. And for cameras, I use a Canon 7D, which is what this is being filmed right now, and trusty iPhone 7, depending on the situation. But that is it for the rig rundown. If you liked it, please throw me a like down below. And if you like all of this, see it in action in some covers sometime. So that would definitely be appreciated. And please subscribe. But thank you so much for watching.